Welcome back, our next gen prophets. We're your spiritual parents, Craig and Colette Toch. Who, guys, things are heating up here on the East Coast. An incredible time with Dr. Mark Rutland, the team, mm-hmm. and us. We've been investing everywhere that God sends us, That's and right. we are anticipating something huge, huge, huge tonight at the P3 Summit with Apostle Ryan Lestrange. We're already connecting with a bunch of you. In fact, for those of you that are on our tribe, I'm going to be doing a podcast recording live at this event. It's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy, but I want you guys to be a part of what we're doing. Um, I'm speaking to Mike here yeah, about we, doing a live Zoom or something. So if you're part of the tribe, you'll be able to sign in and be mm. there with us in the event. If you're not part of the tribe, well, now's a better time than ever. Yes. And that is mypropheticTribe.com. Get yourself there. Mm. Become part of this prophetic move. Come Thank facilitate you. it with us. Thank you. Now, yesterday... We invited you to link arms with us and to join us Mm. as we cross over the Jordan to take on the Jericho in your life. Mm. But today I want to say this. You've never been this way before. No. You've never walked this way before. So if you're looking into the future, into the life that God's given you, and you're saying, Father, I don't recognize the promise. I don't Mm -hmm. recognize the road. I don't recognize the people. I don't recognize the journey. Mm. And I want to assure you, you are exactly where God Mm. needs you to be, exactly Exactly. in the right place. And so today as we continue the message on how to cross your Mm. River Jordan and take down Jericho, I need you to put aside your insecurities and your fears because I want to remind Mm. you of this one thing that he who has begun a good work in you yes. will indeed finish it. Yes. And what he has started yesterday, and if you haven't listened to yesterday's part, yeah, please, 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 please go, go back, back, listen to it, get yes. inspired. It is powerfully anointed. It's mm-hmm. going to trigger the anointing in your life. It's going to trigger all the revelations God's given you yes. over the years, and then it is going to activate that vision for the steps that are ahead. It is a mm-hmm. race to the end of the year, and yes. there's so much that God has to do mm-hmm. in your life. So let's press play. Let's finish the rest of this message. Come on, let us take your Jericho together. Where you're going, the manna is not enough. And that is why God brings you to the river Jordan. Joshua 3, verse 3. And they commanded the people saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. I need you to listen. I need you to listen to what it says next. Do not come near it. Why? That you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. You have not passed this way before. You have not done this before. You've never experienced the move God's bringing. You have not walked in this power before. You've not walked in this pattern before. You've not yet seen what God is going to do through you. So why are you basing your tomorrow on what you experienced yesterday? Why are you judging your today? Because you don't even know what your tomorrow holds. You have not been this way before, but God has and he sends the ark ahead of you. He sends his presence, his glory cloud. Listen, what happened when they first crossed the Red Sea? The scripture tells me that there was a a fire that God put between the Egyptians and the Israelites, right? So that the Egyptians and the Israelites just couldn't even see each other. So God could give them their great escape. But God switches it up. When they cross the Jordan, the fire isn't behind them. It's in front of them. It's in front of them, leading them through the Jordan. And it's all they see. This time it is the Israel, Israelites that are walking blind. They can keep their eyes on only one thing, and that's the ark. 
You have not been this way before. Ah, oh, I've seen many ministries do this. I know how this goes. I know, I know what this church planting thing is. I know where we're going with this. I know where the finances are going to go. I know how. Do you though? Do you though? Because you have not been this way before. God is raising a new generation. A new generation of apostles, of prophets, of teachers, of leaders. Why? Because God wants to take his bride where she has not been before. And we have to follow the ark. We have to follow the ark. And it was the priests whose feet touched that water for the first time in full flood. I would put Dalton as the first priest like you. I think you could take it. I mean, if the tide's strong and it takes you out, then we know it's not safe for the rest of us to cross. As, as an apostle, I have to prioritize. I have to know where to position everybody according to their strength. So it's, it's you and Mike, okay? Yeah. If you get taken out, I missed God this time. And then clearly I wasn't, I, you know, I'm like, my bad. I need to go back. <laughs> I missed a a piece of that. Come on, man, right? (laughs) They had to step out in faith. Who had the encounter with the angel? It wasn't all of Israel. It was Joshua. Who wanted to be that first priest? Your your, your, your boss says, hey, hey, you, you and you, you're going to take the ark, the big heavy gold ark. Yeah, yeah. And you're just going to step into the River Jordan in full flood. Okay. No, there was no indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He couldn't just go back and say, you know, I'm going to, I want to seek God on that. I'm going to spend some time. You know, I just feel like there's more to this revelation. Like I just need to fast and pray this through to see if we are in alignment here. Joshua, like, <laughs> you know, Moses, like, here's the thing. When Moses came down, his face was like shining. I don't even see some, some like gl- that glitter. There's not, you're not, there's not even a, gl- you're not even glowing. Joshua, it's like, you're looking even a little raggedy. You've been in the wilderness like quite a while. You're looking even a bit dusty. <laughs> You know, Moses, you know, you, you know, Moses was the man. <laughs> he came down, he was glowing. We're like, yeah, yeah. You know, we had seen miracles, um, under Moses, you know. You know, at first we weren't sure about the guy, but you know, there were plagues. You know, people got killed. We're like, yeah, he's our man. You know, I could get behind that. Moses was incredible. You know, he parted the Red Sea. He gave us manna. We saw, we saw things. Up until this point, how many miracles had Joshua done? Yeah, this was it. This was it. <laughs> yeah, so who's, who's, who's jumping to the front of the line saying, me, I'll go first. I believe you, Joshua. I know. I'm the kind of guy that like, I need metrics. I need metrics here first. Like if you could just, you know, let's bring you some water, just part it, make it, you know, make it ripple. Make the water ripple. <laughs> then Joshua, we're, you know, we're with you. We're with, we're, we got your back. We got your back. But you know, this new generation, we're a new breed. I find it incredible that the old generation that would complain and have a hissy fit every five minutes, wanting to run back to Egypt, we don't see in the next generation. The reality is, the next generation is not one that complains. The next generation is one that does not say, oh, it's the apostles' vision, it's the leader's vision. They're one that says, this is my vision. This is my vision. The next generation is one that sees beyond their gifts and abilities and recognizes that there is a territory that God requires us as a body to possess. So, I present this challenge. Which generation are you? Are you a generation of faith? Is this your baby? Is this your vision? If not, then, you know, stay on the other side of the Jordan. You'll always have manna. God is gracious. You'll always have manna. God didn't didn't starve the old generation to death. 
It's still to care. But this new generation is crazy. They're crazy. Without any proof, they're just going to step into that Jordan. And they're going to actually expect it to stop. And you know what? It will. You know, the biggest difference between what Moses did and what Joshua did is this. Moses always stood up on the hill. You saw him for miles, a great, big, strong leader. These staff raised high and boom, the miracle took place. The miracles took place with Joshua amongst the people. It was because of the people that the miracles took place. It was because the priests had faith to step in that river because of their obedience and faith that that Jordan stopped. Joshua wouldn't stand there waving his stick over the Jordan. He was marching with the troops to war. They stepped in the Jordan and they stopped the water. You are going to stop the water. Every single one of you here, as you unite and do what God has called you to do as a generation, you will stop the water. You are the miracle makers. You are the world changers. We do this together. This is the next apostolic era that is upon us. It is not about God's man for the hour standing up with his stick anymore. We all have a part to play and comprehend the vast work of God we're going to see in this generation. Because it's not up to one guy, one, one great leader, one great person. It's up to every single one of us, which means we combine our faith. We combine our gifts. We combine our hope and our love. And we take the land, we take the territory together as a team. As as much as you think you know what that promised land looks like on the other side, you have no clue. So before you cross that Jordan... You need to let go of your preconceived ideas of what you think it's going to be there. How can you make a plan and pattern for today for a vision 10 years from now where you will not be the same person? You will not function in the same gifts or anointings. You're not God. So before we go into the new season, it requires us to let go of the preconceived ideas of what we think that season is. Because if you take those ideas with you, you're just the children of Israel wandering around the wilderness again. Isn't that what they did? They had all these ideas of what it would be like to take the promised land, right? We're just going to walk in. I mean, God did it for us in Egypt. I mean, he just killed the first and He just, just up and with a mighty hand, boom, there was blood, there was death. It was fantastic. Everybody was like, we could take the promised land with this. I mean, we're just going to stand and, and God's just going to come. He's going to send his angels out there and boom, he's just going to kill them all. No problem. And then they actually get there. They get to the border of the promised land and they see giants. They're like, I did not see this coming. No, 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 no. That's, that wasn't what I signed up for, God. That wasn't the idea of what I thought the promised land was. And what happened when they adopted that attitude? Mm. They got to turn back and wander the promised land, uh, wander the wilderness until a generation arose that was ready to let go of their preconceived ideas. You wonder why God has you wander in that wilderness for so long. God has given you promise after promise after promise, right? And you're like, when is that time going to come? When I'm going to make that switch where I start seeing that promised land, where I see that. Well, you haven't obviously been in the wilderness long enough because you still keep telling God what your promised land is and is not. Until you come to a place of emptiness of actually, I've been in this wilderness so long, I was born here. I don't, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I don't have the answers. I don't have the pictures. I don't have the visions. At one time, maybe I thought I did, but God, I'm finally at the point where I don't even know what to pray and ask you for. I'm prayed out. I'm asked out. I'm done. Oh, finally, it only took you 40 years. Don't be that guy. I don't know. The older you get, the more you're like, God, you got to hustle, man. <laughs> you're all young. I look at these young people like, oof, Jesus, you got to hustle. We've got a work to do here. How many, 
How, how much more are you going to try and manipulate God into making the promise you want him to make? This is the kind of move I want to see. This is the kind of church I want to see. This is the kind of change I want to see. I want the fruit without the, the fighting. I want the fig trees without the giants. I want, you know, God promises them, I'm going to give you, I, I just sometimes don't get it. I, I'm going to give you houses you did not build. Did it not occur to them they would have to kill said people in those houses? Did they think that they would just be beamed to another country and they could literally just walk in? This is not Star Trek. It's like, what did they think was going to happen when they went to the promised land? Huh? No, so they were just going to walk in because you see, why? Because in, in Egypt, what happened? They knocked on the doors of all of their neighbors and they said, give me your money. And I'd love to see this in real life. It's just everybody go to your neighbor. I need you to go to them. I want you to say, I'd like your um, social security, uh, like, you know, your savings account, you know, your, the bond for your house. Um, would you mind? And they're like, you're a child of God, right? Absolutely. Here we go. You know, the worst part is they said, we promise we'll give it back. We're just going to go and worship in the wilderness and we'll come back. We'll totally give it back to you. Layers. They built the tabernacle with that. As I can imagine, they're thinking, I got God's number. I know he's going to do it. Come to the edge of that promised land. We're just going to knock on the door of the house that somebody else built. We're going to be like, hey, can I have your house? No. (laughs) New rules. New territory. New rules. New territory. It didn't work that way. It worked for Egypt. Moses is dead. Moses is dead. Moses' ways are dead. The way God brought about miracles is dead. The anointing you function in is dead. It's not going to work for the promised land, guys. And while you keep manipulating God to use you the way you want him to use you for your next season, you're going to keep circling that mountain in the wilderness. Because you're not empty yet. Are you empty enough? We say, more Lord, more Lord. You need a whole lot of less. And when you get to that place... You've got to be that empty to be able to put your foot in a raging river in full flood to say, I'm finally at the point where whatever you say, I'm going to do it. I don't know what's going to happen on the other side. I don't even know how we're going to get all these people on the other side without getting killed. But I'm at such a point in my life, God, where I'm out of prayers now. Have you ever come to that place in your life where you're out of prayers? You're out of faith. God gave me this promise. He's going to give me these finances. He's going to give me this. He's going to give me the figs. He's going to give me the grapes. He's going to give me the house. He's going to give me the the bounty. And you've tried so hard to bring it all to pass. And then you just run out of prayers. Next, you just got to step in the Jordan. Because the time of praying and trying to twist God's arm to bring those things to pass is over and a season of obedience is now upon us. They didn't feel the anointing back then, y'all. They were not indwelling. Those priests did not step into that river feeling the power and the glory of God like, yes, Lord. I feel you, Lord, as I step into the... No, there was nothing. They just had the cold water. That's it. But they stepped. And when they stepped, empty after 40 years, in faith, those waters stopped. When they followed the ark... When they followed the Holy Spirit to go where Moses had never gone, that water stopped and they could cross over. There's one more thing I'm going to say about that. And in the next session, I'm going to help you walk into the new season. 
in your promised land. When they crossed that Jordan, when they made the decision to cross the Jordan, the first price they had to pay was letting Moses die. Coming empty. There was another thing that was a hefty price for them. The day they walked over that Jordan, they crossed the path of no return. They couldn't just halfway through and think about it. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think I want to go. I actually got my comfy tent back there. I don't mind manna too much. And my life kind of got a little settled. Now that I think about the price, I might actually pay for this call. You know what? No, it's too late. It's too late. (laughs) Sorry, but your foot is literally in the Jordan. The minute you cross the Jordan, it is a point of no return. There's no change in your mind. There's no going back because when you commit and you take that first step of faith, God carries you the rest of the way. Was those, was that river closed behind them? It was tickets done. Cheers done over. There's no looking back and saying, guys, I think we, I, I, I think we made a mistake here. It's all exciting when it's glory, right? It's all exciting when the promises are coming. And then each one of you, Finally find yourself on the riverbank of the Jordan where God says, and now I'm doing that thing that I've said I will always do. And you're excited and then it hits you. Hang on a minute. I've literally made a home for myself on the side of the Jordan. I didn't realize it until now because I was so busy whining about not having my promise. But actually, now now that the promise is coming at my face, I'm starting to realize what I'm going to have to let go for it. It's like, oh, it's all exciting, you know? Like the first time you go on a ministry trip, it's all exciting. You're on the plane and, you know, it's all exciting, right? The first time. Yeah. After a while, you realize the price is going to (laughs) take. You you take off, you leave your home behind. God God has done that to us more times than than I can count. He did that uh, with us from South Africa to Mexico, Mexico to Switzerland, Switzerland to, to the States, to Mexico. He does that. I, I, we have relocated our entire family and ministry multiple times. And at first, when he gives you the word, you're like, yes, God, but wait a minute. I didn't realize how comfortable, how I pitched a tent. I had a family. I grew deep roots. I began to fall in love with the small territory that God gave me. And now God says the promise is upon you and <gasps> the spirit of God quickens you. And you're like, yes, yes, yes. And then it dawns on you. When you cross that Jordan, be prepared. It's a point of no return. You will never, ever, ever go back to what you have here. When you cross this Jordan, that God is putting this family in, you will never return to what this is. And you should start thanking God for that because you have not been this way before. You have not seen the miracles that are coming. You're not seeing the change. You're not seeing the growth that God can do. Get tired of your manna because the day that you cross that Jordan, the manna ceases. But you get grapes. And you didn't even know what a grape was. And you didn't even know how good it could be. You just heard about it from your parents, parents, that one day there will be grapes. That's it. But you will get to taste them for yourself. So no, don't look at what you have now and go, oh, we're not going to have this. We should be, yes, praise God, we're not going to have this anymore. Because we're going to have something so much better on the other side of that Jordan.